Hey there, Jim Johnson for AccentHelp.com, and I'm making my way through the diphthongs. We are now on the goat diphthong, the O. So again, the first half of this is not one that we commonly recognize on its own in American speech, whereas the second half would be as in a word like foot, o, o. The American tendency here is, well, I will say when you look this up in like in a pronouncing dictionary, it'll tend to be written like this. Now, if you're looking for at a pronouncing dictionary that is for British speakers, they'll usually go with something like this because they're shooting for RP, received pronunciation, standard British, that sort of O, goat, goat, as opposed to goat right now. This is not throughout England. In fact, many parts of England will do something I'm going to talk about coming up in just a moment. Um, much of England will, actually, the moment that you step outside of, of the southeast of, of England. So um, with this one, this is the way that it tends to be written for Americans in pronouncing dictionaries, but I, don't, I think very few Americans actually do this. The big thing that I hear happening is a really strong reduction in the rounding of this symbol, the O, 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 O. Most Americans go more O, O, where it's almost like it's O, uh, O, uh, O. Now that's too much in the middle. It's something much closer to the O, O, O. So I guess we could write it as the, it looks like a V with a little teardrop at the bottom of it. We could write it as that to take away that lip rounding altogether, but now we're getting into weird symbols and I don't want to make things more confusing by throwing a new, brand new symbol at you when I don't think that it's necessary. The way that I think that most Americans realize this diphthong is uh, that there's a little bit of lip rounding. And so that's why I use this diacritic which is a tweak to the symbol that says reduced lip rounding. So instead of O, O, O. Now I do think there's some lip rounding on here probably because it's prepping for a little bit of rounding on this, which most Americans do a little bit of. Some will do more on it. But that rounding there, I think carries over a little bit into here. Otherwise we could maybe represent it with that V with a teardrop on it, but I think there tends to be a little bit of rounding that occurs on it. That, I would say, is the big thing to be aware of in American speech, is that it doesn't tend to be O, O, it tends to be O, 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 O. You know, in some ways, it almost may feel like it's a schwa with a little bit of lip rounding. O, 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 O but then I feel like I'm going a little far with it. So I will use the familiar and give a little tweak to it to suggest reduced lip rounding. Now, how does this occur in a lot of American accents? You actually will go towards, towards a schwa for the first half of it in a lot of accents. You might think of this as sort of that Southern California surfer dude stereotype. You know, you totally know. Let's go down there, go, go, okay? That same thing happens in other parts of the country. You'll hear it a lot in um, eastern Pennsylvania. You'll hear it in, uh, think about the Baltimore stereotype, the bottomer, bottomer, going, going down the ocean, down the ocean, oh, oh, ocean, ocean, ocean. Really strong neutralization of the first half of that diphthong. Um, and then the other thing that I would say that will happen for American speakers is where you actually get rid of the second half of it. You might think of this as the Minnesota, Minnesota, the upper Midwest thing that'll tend to occur. I'm from far enough north in Iowa that it'll occur in my hometown, you know, you know, no, where the second half is almost completely gone. And when you go even further north, you could think of this as the Canadian, oh, oh, don't ya know, that kind of thing. Or Fargo, Fargo, that, Oftentimes, that second half may actually be gone completely. This also occurs in a ton of accents. It happens in much of England, where you end up with the O and the A. Those diphthongs drop the second half, and 
pretty much every ESL, I talked about this with the face diphthong last time, but pretty much every ESL, English as a second language accent, drops the second half of this diphthong and it simply becomes no, don't go, don't go. You might think of this as Irish, you know, don't you know. It's actually more in Northern Ireland, you'll hear that pure O sound, whereas a lot of the rest of Ireland, you'll get a little bit of that O, 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 sort of an on glide to it. A little bit like I was talking about with Baltimore or a little bit of what I mentioned with RP, O, O, kind of in that direction will happen in other parts of Ireland. Scotland, O, you'll oftentimes hear that there as well. So that's an introduction to the goat diphthong, especially with relation to American accents. If you want to dive into American accents, you can check out my Generican materials or other American accent materials or more than 50 different accents from around the world at accenthelp.com. Thank <laughs> you.